played a game of 40k and I posted some pictures and got some justifiable criticism on our terrain setup. Now, taking a look around, Orspec's tactics had some nice templates to help with our placement in the future. Okay, I have plenty of obscuring ruins and industrial structures, but not much in the way of dense cover from vegetation. I pondered making some weird trees or some capillary towers, but Easter had just passed by and I saw these when I was shopping at my local Safeway. Okay, how about some alien cactus-like domes with weird tentacles and other wriggly bits that looks like it could be more than a plant, like maybe the ambush beastie from Flash Gordon. <laughs> With that image in mind, I did a quick little doodle to guide me. Meanwhile, in the angling aisle, I spied these tackle items, and these are going to be perfect. Petco, next door, had some cheap aquarium plastic plants, and I grabbed a multi-pack bag to add some three-inch dense cover height to the terrain pieces. Okay, I selected a bunch of the plastic eggs after washing the tackle pieces and leaving them to dry. I wanted to create more variety in height in the eggs, but an exacto cracks the plastic because it's so thin. Scissors did the same but by using a serrated steak knife, I could saw through them and cut some of them down a little to get some to represent smaller fledgling plants. I cut out three squares of chipboard and ran a blade at an angle along the edges to create a nice sloping beveled edge. Now, onto the tentacles. I used scissors and snipped off one end at about a 45 degree angle and moved to attach them. Super glue just didn't cut it, so I used hot glue to attach the tentacle bits to the tallest of the eggs. This actually worked out much better as it created a nice swollen blob for a base, looking more like a growth than something pushing its way out. The super glue worked fine for adding the tubes though. I cut the worm things to a various lengths and started placing them around the plastic eggs. These tubes will each feed to a spike, which I will be creating out of cocktail sticks. With wire cutters, I snipped off the pointy ends at various lengths, and when you do this, watch out, as these things fly all over the place if you don't catch them. The hazard here is not finding one, and it gets snagged in your carpet so that later you step on it. I applied little blobs of hot glue and then pressed in and wiped aside to stop getting those endlessly stretching strings of glue. I added larger sticks at the top of the tubes and smaller ones everywhere else. I had pondered leaving these surfaces smooth, but it just didn't look right, so I troweled lines of hot glue from the tentacle and the smaller spines down the blank sides to the chipboard, creating nice lumpy veins. I blasted everything with primer and left it to dry completely to make sure this next stage works well, which was brushing a layer of Elmer's glue across the chipboard and then gently sprinkling on sand from Red Rocks Nevada. If the primer wasn't fully dry, grains would get stuck on the plants and I wanted them free of sand. Once the glue was dry, I started painting on a latoc blue on the tentacles and then dry brushed the spines, the feed lines and the lumpy skin. A lighter dry brush with some hoth blue on the tentacle tips, the spike tips and some hints on the main bulb and the feed tendrils to highlight them. A finally and even more frugal application of a dry brush with Ethereum Blue Dry. Grabbing the most bush-like of the plants, I cut them from the weighted aquarium bases and held them by the tops and gave them a quick swiping blast of black spray paint. I could have just glued them down, but I wanted to make them look more like they were truly emerging from the sand, not just perched atop it. So I drilled holes through the sand, the glue and the chipboard base, applied a blob of hot glue in the hole and inserted the bushes. Okay. These came out way better than I thought they would. 
on a roll, I continued and repeated the whole procedure, but this time cut the chipboard to flow along the sides of the eggs. The first application of colour was Corn Red, and the first dry brush is Wild Riders Red, with the final accent dry brushing being Flash Gits Yellow. On the surfaces of the plants, I tried a nice wash of Vulpus Pink Contrast Paint. I cut up the aquarium plants and gave the ones that look more like conifer trees a quick dry brush of the Flash Gits Yellow before adding them and then dropped in the other more leafy ones to get the terrain to the three inches high and fulfill the requirements for dense cover. So, here we are, in the deserts of a distant alien world. A genus of plants has evolved to tolerate the brutal parched environment. With a fleeting similarity to cacti, these plants stretch tentacle-like roots deep into the ground to reach subterranean traces of water. The plants dissuade grazing animals by extending ranks of vicious spikes from their bulbous, dense skins. When fully mature, they extend ridged, tendril-like growths up from their peaks. And when the desert winds blow, they release seeds that waft through the air. And when they settle on the sand, they reach down with fresh roots to seek water. If they find it, they grow into mature plants. Otherwise, they die. They have been dubbed Oasis Cacti, because as they draw water up from the depths, the meager excess they shed creates a miniature oasis, and this is enough for less hardier plants to eke an existence. This results in several species of bush and leafy plant often growing amongst the oasis cacti. <laughs>